lot of feelings. Okay, so I wanna start this conversation with a modern parable. I want you to think back to when you were a little kid, like around six or seven years old. Life was so new and exciting. You'd play make-believe with your friends, you'd run around on the playground, and everywhere you looked was something new and exciting to play with and discover. Now the grown-ups did set some basic rules. Don't hit each other, only one kid at a time on the slide, and be kind. And they set these rules to help ensure a safe and successful playground that still gave us plenty of freedom to roam and explore and be little kids. But occasionally as kids, you know, we make mistakes. Someone gets hurt, someone says something mean, and then the grown-ups need to intervene. They pick us up and they set us right back on the right path. And that's how I've always viewed the role of government. They set up some basic parameters that keep us safe, but still give us room to explore, learn, and grow. A space that allows us to make our own mistakes and helps us out when we fall down. Not a helicopter parent, and they're not an absentee parent, they're just your average general run-of-the-mill parent. And yes, that means there's going to be some mistakes, but the intention is always to do what is best for your child. I think we can all agree that life doesn't feel that way right now. Both sides of the political spectrum are angered. One side feels that there are way too many new rules that are inhibiting the natural growth and freedom and exploration that is humanity. In other words, it's like saying that the government put caution tape over every piece of playground equipment handed us an iPad and said, well, you're still technically playing outside. So this group of people, they just want to be able to play on the playground that they've known and loved and that they rightfully have access to as kids. They understand that they might occasionally fall and get hurt. That's part of the human experience. Now, the other side of the playground feels that the pre-existing rules don't actually benefit everybody in the classroom. We need to create a new set of rules that really includes everybody. This means that we're gonna have to have indoor recess for a while while we tear down the existing playground and rebuild a new one. So perhaps this year's class won't get to have any recess, but hopefully next year's class will, and maybe this time with a better playground. However, there's no guarantee that this new playground will be any better, and we have no idea how long it will take for it to get built. But as a kid, you don't think your playground's gonna go away at all. So what do you do when it's gone? Well, what else is there to do for fun? You can always play with your friends. Even as adults, in times of crisis, we turn to those who we love. Our friends, our families, we hold them close. Community makes us stronger. But right now, we are not allowed to play with our friends. They can't see our parents. There's no physical touch. There's no hug to say it's gonna be okay. So what else can you do for fun? Well, there's always art. And every ancient civilization I've ever studied at least, they have some form of art, whether that's pottery, wall paintings, or performance art, like commedia and folklore and all the different tales you see. There's nothing quite like the experience of live shared art, that theatrical shared human connection that helps us process and understand our world. And right now, we don't have that either. I mean, sure, we have YouTube and Netflix and Spotify and TikTok, what have you, but these aren't really tools that bond us together. Often, in fact, it feels more isolating because now I'm stuck in my bedroom, staring at a screen, wishing my life was like their life on my 32% battery. And I think that's why this time in history is so painful. In times of crisis, we as human beings have turned to community and art, and right now, those are the things we are not allowed to have. Friendship is seen as a health threat. Family gatherings are seen as irresponsible. And the droplets from laughter are seen as sinful. Now, I'm not trying to make a political statement. I'm speaking about humanity. That our natural instincts for solving problems are now deemed as the problem. It's like seeing your friend fall on the playground and instead of rushing over to help him or grabbing the nurse or a teacher, you just stay on top of the slide and watch him cry and you hope the tears stop and the blood clots. I want to do my part to be a responsible member of our society. I want to do my part in maintaining the morals of our country. And I honestly think that's what we all are trying to do, but just none of us quite know how to do that right now. 
The mayor of California recently released a 14 page document to places of worship in our state. One of the new requests or demands was to remove singing from places of worship. My church specifically, right when it had to switch to online services, maintained one member of our very vast music service community. He sang and played at every mass since March. When the church reopened with its new parameters, he was moved to the choir loft way far away from the congregation. And also granted the congregation is super spread out too, so there's no way those little singing spitlets are getting anywhere. However, this man who's been with us since March is now no longer able to sing. And this cut me deeply. Because in church, we don't just sing because it's fun. We sing because we believe singing is praying twice. It's a reverent act. It's our form of prayer. So then obviously that brings us to the whole debate on separation of church and state and if that line's being blurred. On one hand, I'm like, well, I'm still allowed to be Catholic. I can still watch mass online or even attend mass with all these new parameters granted. However, what drew me to Catholicism was the music and the structure and the tradition. All of that's been compromised. It doesn't feel like my church anymore. And so that's hard in a time of crisis to feel like I don't have my faith fueled. <laughs> Those of you who follow my channel know that I'm a musician. I'm also a working actress and dancer in Los Angeles. And I've been in the arts my entire life. I was in my first play in the preschool. I wrote my first song at age six, started voice lessons at age 10. I started dance at 12. I had private monologue coaching at 13. I then went to a performing arts high school, AKA Pebblebrook Performing Arts High School in Cobb County, Georgia. Shout out, go Falcons! Where I majored in acting with a double minor in dance and vocal performance. While I was there, I was also a member of their elite performance group called Company. I was president of their improv club. I was also part of several choirs acapella groups, and I was even fortunate enough to go to Georgia Governor's Honors Program as an acting major, education reformation minor. After high school, I flew my way across the country to the University of California, Santa Barbara, where I got my BFA in acting and also simultaneously took classes in voice and dance. After I graduated UCSB, go Gauchos, made my way down to LA, where now I have an active career in television and film. So yeah, it's my life. So because my current acting medium is digitalized, I'm still able to do some work while maintaining social distancing rules. I've been able to do some voiceover gigs. I was also able to be in a web series. Granted, I had to film it all on my phone while they gave me directions through Zoom. It was a lot of work. I'm also part of a sketch comedy group. We're able to rehearse online. Granted, we can't perform that way. I'm in an improv team. We can't rehearse because there's lags and technology just hasn't quite caught up with that need. I'd also just begun doing stand-up right before everything shut down and obviously all those venues are closed too. Still, I am just so thankful to have something. Granted, there are laws that are in discussion and will likely be put into place about how Hollywood should be when it reopens. One of these laws reduces significantly the amount of background actors you can have in a scene. And there's people who, that's what they do for a living, so that's a whole job market who's gonna really suffer. Also, they're really encouraging that you get rid of any intimacy scenes, kissing, or greater than, which is understandable but upsetting. So that means the law is now informing what kind of stories we can tell. And I don't know if you're familiar with that concept, but there's a term for it and it's called censorship. Unfortunately, many of my colleagues who work solely in live performance are without work entirely. I have a lot of friends who work on Broadway and on cruise ships. Broadway is shut down for the rest of 2020 cruise ships, whew, I don't even know what their future holds. Now these are friends of mine who put on their first pair of tap shoes when they were three years old and have spent thousands upon thousands of dollars on dance classes and monologue coachings and singing lessons. I mean, they train every day. They sacrifice going to weddings and funerals for the sake of rehearsals and now they don't know when they'll be allowed to work again. Their dancing bodies are atrophying. The only singing they can do is in the shower and the only acting they do is when they act like they're okay. And my heart breaks. We all knew the entertainment industry was a tough one but no one could have predicted it'd be tough in this way. So let me return to my metaphor of the kid at the playground because guess what? 
It's not a metaphor. Any of you with kids know this is your current reality. In addition to my performance career, I have a few side hustles, one of which is I'm a substitute teacher. And let me tell you, our educational system is messed up. And I get it. Look, schools are the germiest places. When I was teaching, I got sick all the time. So yes, I understand not wanting to go back into an institutionalized educational system. However, online teaching, online learning is super lacking. It requires a parent to actively be involved. And realistically, most American families have working parents who just can't be that person for their kids, especially in lower income areas. As if we didn't already have an issue with the privilege becoming more privileged, now we have this bigger and bigger divide in class based off of internet service. Look, if everyone had the means to homeschool their children, we'd homeschool our children. If people didn't like church, they wouldn't go. If humans didn't want music and movies, we just wouldn't create them. We wouldn't watch them. But we are human, and those are things we need. And the universal truth I've come to know about humankind is that we are built for learning, for expression, and for community. And right now, we don't have any of that. I wish this was the part of the video where I offered all these amazing, easy solutions. I only have some little tidbits that hopefully help while we look for those bigger solutions. One, be kind, and not just to the people you agree with, to everyone. Hate is ugly from all angles. Two, be patient. Things will get better. Sometimes you have to make a mess before you can reorganize. Three. Find ways to keep your humanity. Yeah, it might look different than how it used to, but humans are very adaptable creatures. Four, don't feel pressured and don't pressure others. We all have the same amount of experience in dealing with a crisis like this, and that is none. Every opinion is valid. Every process is valid. Just because someone's on a different path than you does not mean they are amoral. So stop thinking you're smarter or dumber than the person next to you. And lastly, number five. No matter how much bad there is in the world, there will always be more good. So look for the good. Thank you so much for listening to my thoughts and words as of July 7th, 2020. As I continue to grow and form as a human being, I'm sure my opinions will grow as well. Thank you to everyone who's given me a space to continue to grow and learn and who's been able to have calm conversations with me that help me grow as a person. I really appreciate it and I look forward to ever building character and I wish the same for you all. God bless.